It's a pleasure to have you here. This is the AM News. Details now. Now, brace for more power outages because my minority says the power situation will worsen this week as Gritco continues to shed load. Minority spokesperson on energy, John Jinapo, says president must intervene to convince Asogli to come back soon to the stream. Well, our checks, incontrovertible, mm. confirms that Gritco has been shedding load over the past one week. Mm. And that is going to get worse from today. There are two main reasons. And like Gritko put it, the first challenge is the issue of fuel. Because consumption is increased, the gas that we bequeath to this government mm. is unable to meet the gas supply needs. And so government has been procuring light crude oil at a cost of about $40 million every month. But because of the current financial situation, the government is unable to support the power sector players to procure light crude oil. And so as we speak, there is shortage of light crude oil. So even when the plants are available, because of inadequate fuel, they are unable to generate enough power to meet domestic needs. Two is that Asogle has also decided to shut down its plants more than 500 megawatts. And so that creates a huge shortfall. And so the combined effect of these two unfortunate uh, situations has led to a significant reduction in the supply of power, culminating in what we call doomso or load sharing. And this has been ongoing for about one week. There is a solution, and the solution is in two folds. Firstly, the president must intervene and plead with Asogli to turn back their power plant. But that can only be done if some significant payment is made to Asogli. Because as a stance, they have indicated that they cannot operate because of financial difficulty. Secondly, government must find some money so they can procure some light crude oil. But going forward, it means that the next government must ensure that we really accomplish the gas to era, the gas to power era that we all envisage. Without that solution, we'll keep having these fuel challenges and we'll keep having this load shedding that we are experiencing intermittently. And for me, that is where we ought to be focusing. This government has failed to address the challenges, the situation and the problems exacerbated. Now we are in load shedding, even though they don't want to that they are still low. The truth is that the sector is crumbling. The debt keeps mounting. All the else have been caught. All the guarantees caught. And so technically, Ghana is in default. And at this stage, my worry is that the energy sector is on the verge of collapse. Hmm. Now, the Education Ministry has announced the release of the 2024 school placement. Details have been captured in a statement, which I'll read to you in a bit. The statement is coming from the Ministry of Education, and it reads, Release of 2024 School Placement. The Ministry of Education announces to students, parents, and the general public that the 2024 computerized school selection and placement system um, for senior high schools and technical and vocational education and training institutions is live. Out of the 563,339 results received from WIEC, 553,155 candidates qualified to be placed. A total of 447,698, that makes 80.93% of qualified candidates have automatically been placed in one of their choices. However, 104,918 qualified candidates could not be matched to any of their choices. Out of the number, it's just about uh, 73,390, which makes 13.27% of qualified candidates who've been placed in schools similar to those they selected. And such students are at liberty to accept or reject the offer. You can grab a copy of the statement for further details on all our social media platforms and myjoyonline.com. In other stories, former Majority Leader and Minister for Parliamentary Affairs, Osei Cheyman Tabunsu, is confident the New Patriotic Party will secure victory 
in the upcoming elections, drawing from recent surveys conducted by credible stakeholders committed to the nation's progress and integrity and free from any political influence. Mr. Mensah Bosu stressed that if the elections had been held in mid-2023, the National Democratic Congress would have had a clear upper hand. But recent data indicates a noticeable shift in favor of the NPP. He spoke in an interview with Evan Spencer on PM Express. Drawing my inspiration from facts and figures available to me. What, what facts and figures are these? I know. I've, I've seen the, 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 the uh, surveys that have been done, the researches that have been done. And I'm talking to the figures that, are, that I'm seeing. Yeah, but do you are the point your is own surveys, are they credible? Not, no, no. It's not my own service. It's the party's own service. Mm. So what service are these? It's coming from, you know, interested parties, major stakeholders in the fortunes of Ghana. And I've seen the, Who the, might the that figures. Be? I've seen the figures. And look, if elections had held last year, before the holding of our primaries, uh, the, 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 it would have been, um, you know, a no contest. For the NDC. A complete wipeout. A no contest for the NDC. That's mid 2023. Even until we elected our, our flag bearer, the kind of divisiveness and the language that was being employed by some people, some of whom were even in the race, uh, really, they were not filtering their, 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 their statements. And it was really doing some considerable causing some internal bleeding in the party. So maybe by the close of even last year, if elections had held, um, the NEC would have really had a very, a very heavy uh, margin of victory. I've seen the figures first quarter this year, and I saw that the, 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 the lead of the principal person for the NDC has been plummeting. June, it comes down. September, it's down. Look, the next, this election is going to be determined by what happens the next, the next one month or one and a half months ahead of us. I'm telling you. And whereas the Omiya is coming out with sharp solutions, bold solutions, our compatriot, he cannot reinvent I mean, which himself. Which figures is this? Because I've seen, you talk about independent neutral parties, of course, watching on and doing their own point. But I've seen Fitch predict that NDC will win this. I've seen the Economic Intelligence Unit report. So where, where are you getting these figures from? Which, 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 when was it done? I mean, the when, last one, I've when was seen, it the, done? the Fitch one was in the last couple of months. When was it done? In the last couple of months. The it Fitch was one released, I it was released the last, the last uh, about a month ago. When, when was the survey itself done? That's what you should be speaking to. When was your survey done? Oh, you are, are, you, are, you, are you responding to my question with another question? No, I'm... I'm I, I, you, you, <laughs> oh, you had a question. I, 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 saw, I saw the results <laughs> a month ago. You saying, of course, I'm they were saying, collected I'm asking you, before that, which is fair. When was it done? I can't tell you that as Precisely. I speak. Precisely. But I've Precisely. mentioned my sources that say that you are losing the election. You say you are winning. Yes. And what's your source? And I don't need to disclose my source to you. But you must. I've told you, I told you that, that they, I told what everybody has I've given you a hint that it's made up of interested parties, major stakeholders in the affairs of Ghana. W independent, the objective, you know, Fitch analysis. You can watch the full interview on all our social media platforms, especially on YouTube. Now, moving on, the Ghana Statistical Service has initiated the 8th Ghana Living Standard Survey. Um, the Ghana Living Standard Survey is a national representative household survey that provides statistics on the welfare and living conditions of individuals and households in Ghana. It is also known as the GLSS-8, and it will, among other indicators, measure poverty nationwide. The one-year survey will assess children's literacy and numeracy skills in any language. There's more in this report. The Ghana Statistical Service is set to conduct the eighth round of the Ghana Living Standard Survey, GLSS-8, which will focus on learning poverty. The 2021 Population and Housing Census indicated that 30.2% of the population six years and older were not literate in any language, highlighting the need for interventions to reduce illiteracy. 
Learning poverty is the inability of children to read and understand a simple text by age 10. Speaking at the closing ceremony for the training of field officers, Mrs. Abina Asamaba Osei Akutu, chief statistician and project coordinator, shared the objectives of the GLSS8. Then learning poverty is finding out children 10 years who are able to read and understand a text that has been prescribed for that age level. And they, they are able to read and understand. So what we did was to engage the Ministry of Education and NACA as mentioned, and we prepared test items for these children. And here we concentrated on ages 4 to 17 years. We want to find out and assess on them on literacy levels as, as well as numeracy levels. So the learning poverty will help us report globally on how the country fares on that indicator. But generally we are going to get all other indicators related to education, especially SDG 4.1.1 A, B and C. GLSS 8 is a World Bank and Government of Ghana project that will span a period of 12 months from 31st October 2024 to October 2025. According to Dr. Ousu Keja, the survey would cover around 1,000 clusters reaching over 25,000 households across the country. So this is going to be a one-year project. As we indicated, by 31st October, we expect all field officers to be in their areas of assignment. And the next day, which is 1st November, all of us are starting um, uh, interviewing. And we are going to do this um, throughout 2024 and 2025 until October um, thereabout. Um, and so as I indicated in my submi earlier submission, each selected household will be um, visited about five times. However, we're going to be in that community for 35 days. And so it is because there are a whole lot of indicator that we are measuring and this intervene definitely cannot take um, just a day or a few days and that's why in order not to um, burden or overburden the respondent we are spreading the number of questions that we are asking for the 35 days the national coordinator in charge of learning assessment at the ministry of education clement Osei entry emphasize the ministry's dedication to applying recent surveys to strengthen educational policies. And the key thing of these um, projects is the learning assessment, the conduct of learning assessment, which is for us to estimate the extent of learning poverty in Ghana. The World Bank is saying that by 810, we want to find out the percent of learners who are in Ghana who can, who can read and write with understanding. It's very important that whatever the children read, they must have an understanding of it. And so um, the assessment is to estimate the proficiency levels of learners who are attaining functional literacy skills and functional numeracy skills in Ghana. This project is in itself is very, very important to us as Ministry of Education. Um, we want to know whether there are disparity when it comes to gender disparity in terms of literacy and numeracy skills. In addition to providing data on learning poverty, the GLSS 8 will also provide and generate statistics for the estimation of monetary and non-monetary poverty. For Joy Business, my name is Eric Asante. Moving on, the National Museum of India has a collection of over 60,000 different disciplines of art collected from various parts of the country. Some of the objects are as old as 9,000 years old. Uh, Joy News Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam, who is part of 30 journalists drawn from nine countries from West and Central Africa by the government of India, has more in this report. Day two of my visit to India took me to the National Museum of India. Here, there are over 60,000 collections of all forms of arts that were taken from different parts of the country. According to a volunteer guide of the museum, 
far further shy or want to see each of the objects in a minute, you will require two years, nine months, and 23 days. Actually, an exhibition of Indian antiquities was held in London in 1947-48. And that was the time when India just got independence, you know. And then these artifacts were basically collected from the different parts of the country. And in 1949, they all were brought back to the country and they were displayed at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. And over there, we found lot many businesses at that place. Finally, we decided to have our own museum. So it all started at that point of time. We finished the building in 1960. So we are into this museum since 1960. As far as the collection of objects goes at this place, we have collection from all spheres of art. It could be sculptures, which could be in, say, terracotta, stones, metals. We have the coins. We have the paintings. You have the arms, the armor, the Central Asian. You name anything, and you have all objects of all disciplines of art. Right? And if you go by the number, the collection in our museum is somewhere around 2,60,000, you know. And if you take one minute to see one object, we require two years, nine months, and 23 days to see the museum. Some of the objects at the museum are over 9,000 years. This human skeleton, for example, is over 6,000 years. The earliest object in our collection happens to be from the Stone Age. The Stone Age, maybe we have specifically the stone tools. The tools could be probably they are from the Paleolithic Age and the Mesolithic Age. That is, they are around 2 lakh years old. As far as the Galilee goes, the cotton Galilee starts from the Harappan civilization. And the, uh, if you go by the dates, you know, that is around 5,000 years old. But the recent excavation at a place called Konal in Haryana, that suggests that the civilization could go back to 7th millennium BC. That is, that is somewhere around 9,000 years old civilization. The museum on daily basis attracts way for visitors from all walks of life including pupils from slew of schools in the country. The museum is very big. The footfall, you can see a lot of students here. It has around a footfall, around 5,000 person every day. If you go by the visitors, we have visitors from every age group, starting from the small kids you can see here to the senior citizens. The gallery has, in the ground floor, the gallery has been arranged in the chronological order, ascending period of time periods. So we start from Harappa, we move on to the late medieval, that is 15th century. And a lot of galleries thereafter have a specific theme, you know, like the decorative art gallery, the wood carving gallery, the numismatics, the textiles. We have the Tanjore painting, the Central Asian gallery. We have the Bema, that's a museum is there. We got a Buddha museum here. So we have uh, the galleries here, covers all disciplines of art. Despite the huge numbers recorded at the museum, Papadasha says India doesn't benefit much economical from it, but offers the people opportunity to learn their culture and tradition. The important role of museum is to make you understand your culture, your traditions, to learn about that, and not limited to your place, to the other countries also. And in fact, if you saw that in Indus Valley, we saw the Mesopotamian seal also, Gilgamesh. That basically suggests that like, movement from one place to another. So we learn a lot from, like you have come from other country. You will take a lot of things from our place. Maybe you inculculated it there. We learn a lot from there. We put it at this place. So museum plays a very important role in your learning. And particularly if you look at the kids, they learn better than others, you know, because they read and then they see the objects, you know. So museum is important for your culture, for your traditions, for other cultures, for the other traditions. As far as economy goes, the charges, if you look at it, is 20 rupees for a person, you know, which is negligible. It, is, it does not even cover your operational costs, you know. So economy is never a purpose of a museum, you know. From the National Museum of India, this is Rafiq Salam reporting for the news. Now, for the first time in four years, the Ashanti region's hopes for the National Science and Maths Quiz glory has been dashed. The region, which has proven to be an indomitable force over the years, suffered an unexpected setback this year, with none of its 29 participating schools making a grand finale appearance. My colleague Jacqueline Asamoyewa has the breakdown on the intense battles that led to this moment. <music> 
The journey began with high hopes as 29 Ashanti schools threw in their hat in the ring for this year's National Science and Maths quiz. Eight of these schools were seeded, but as the dust settled, it became clear that Ashanti star power would face some heavy challenges. The heartbreak began when five-time champions, Premper College, had to take a bow after suffering a defeat to Infantapim School. Two-time champions with the most final appearances, Opokuwari School, bowed out after a tough clash with Ghana National College, both at the quarter-final stage. We are going to show Opokuwari School that when you are going to Kumase, when you get to Yamrasa, you turn left. And so we have shown them the road to Santasin. We gave their ladies the same point margin of 21 points, and today we are giving we are giving their husbands also a one point margin. Instead at the end, we say what? Let's accept this words in French. At this point, for Premier College, Stephanie. Then there was a Saito to Senior High School, who defied the odds to reach the semi-finals for the first time. Despite their fierce determination, they were etched out by Infantapim School, putting an end to the Ashanti region's run. Bayern versus Barcelona. I hope, I hope, I hope you check the scoreline. Yeah. I checked the scoreline. Yesterday, Barcelona versus Real Madrid. I hope you check the scoreline. Uti, Uti, today we are going to beat Prisek and Buche. Schools from the region over the last four years proved to be a force to reckon with. But from an initial lineup of 29 schools, eight of them seeded, only four of the schools have a safe spot in the next edition. The region is, however, gearing up to come back stronger in the next edition to claim their glory as the powerhouse in the national competition. For Joy News, I'm Jacqueline and Suma Yaboa. And we'll be bringing you all the updates in the build-up to the grand finale. You want to stay tuned to this channel for all um, the details on the National Science and Maths Quiz. And the National Science and Maths Quiz is produced by Primetime Limited and sponsored by the Ghana Education Service in partnership with Goal PLC and supported by Pepsodent, Jupe, Prudential Life Insurance Ghana and Better Mod. And the broadcast of the 2024 National Science and Maths Quiz on the Joy News channel is supported by NASCO, Vitamilk, Virtual Security Africa, Ace Medical Insurance, Build Financial Technologies, DBS Roofing, Syntex Tanks, Family Health Medical College, Chop Box Technologies and Action Secondary Technical, DPS Pipes, Waka Now and Coronation Insurance. Coming up next is Business Updates with Benjamin Akaku. Welcome to business. Let's get right down to it. An independent power producer, Sunona Sogli, has described government's position on debt owed the company as dishonest. The Minister for Finance, Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam, over the weekend accused Sunona Sogli of acting in bad faith after the power company shut down its plant due to a $259 million debt. Spokesperson for Sunona Sogli, Elik Blim Apetogbo, uh, said the finance ministry had not been candid in its negotiations to restructure the debt. Uh, in the first place, let me say that that is absolute dishonesty on the part of our finance minister. Uh, there has been so much dishonesty in the whole process on his part. He has maintained a very haughty and condescending character in the whole process which is not good for a public officer, particularly in the office of a finance minister. I'm not aware when we have agreed to sign uh, restructuring terms with anyone. We are still negotiating. No one goes into a negotiation to lose. It is always a win-win affair. And he has always maintained a position that if you will not accept this, I'm not going to pay you. That is a very disappointing character of a public office holder like him. Now, the Food and Beverages Association of Ghana has reiterated its disapproval of the introduction of new digital machines for fixing excise uh, tax stamps on their products by the Ghana Revenue Authority. According to the association's chairman, John Awini, it will be a disincentive to members of the association and other manufacturing firms to assume the cost of procuring the said machines. His reaction comes on the back of renewed calls by the Association of Ghana Industries for the implementation of the use of digital stamp machines. 
The AGI should not be calling for the introduction of new digital stamp, tax stamp machines at a time when businesses are grappling with serious uh, forex losses and the rising cost of doing businesses. Many businesses focus right now is on is how to survive the difficult times, most especially as the city continues to depreciate and also how to be able to uh, get working capital to continue their businesses, most especially when interest rates are very, very high. Indeed, the GRE have the right to introduce uh, new machines at any time to enhance their revenue collection. But it should not be done at the expense of the consumer. It should not be done at the expense of the manufacturer. Because ECG, for instance, keeps on introducing new machines from time to time, but they don't do it at the expense of the consumer. If GRA is ready to bear the cost of these new digital stack stamp machines, uh, or the government is ready to bear the cost of the uh, new digital stack stamp machines and their accessories, then the members of the Food and Beverage Association will also be ready to bear that. But at the time, things are really very hard and the rate of turnover, sales turnover is very down and uh, the issues of uh, losses due to further the, the depletion of the city, I don't think that we should be calling for introduction of new machines uh, at this point in time. Well, that's our recap of business. But before I go, here are our currency market statistics for today. All business is done and dusted. Handing over back to Sweetie Abochi. Thank you, Benjamin. And that's a wrap for the AM News on the AM Show. You want to stay with us because, of course, you know the conversations begin now. Kojo Poku is energy analyst and Wisdom Dogbe is a financial analyst. They both join us to review the newspapers. We're back in a bit.